Hello there. Welcome to Fresh Manna. My name is Michael. For every message, I start off with Romans 15, 13. It says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace for believing that hope will abound by the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe that. <laughs> and uh, before I start today's message, um, I want to express that the heart I have uh, right now in my ministry and all my messages is to um, express how complete we are in Jesus. Paul says we have been made complete in him. You know, and, and, and there is no condemnation that is, that is for those who are in Christ Jesus. There's no condemnation at all for those that are in Christ Jesus. You know, and we have been made complete in him. You know, so I really feel like the heart of my ministry is to emphasize that you have been made complete in him. And there is zero condemnation for any of you, any of us that are in Christ. There is zero condemnation. And condemnation is every negative thought a person has on himself. Every negative thought you have about yourself is condemnation. And according to the Word of God, Jesus has made you absolutely complete. In Christ, there is absolutely zero condemnation. So, with that being said, I mean, I think this is going to be a great message that will bless you. Um, it blessed me this week as I was meditating on this. Because I've seen something here. In... Uh, the third temptation that Satan had for Jesus uh, when he was tempted in the wilderness. You know, I found myself marveling, like, on this third temptation, Jesus tells him to go away. It's like, I almost feel like something struck a nerve on this temptation that the other ones didn't. <laughs> and uh, so I really, I think the heart of this message is, are you going to choose to bow down to condemnation the words of condemnation that come from the enemy, or are you going to choose to bow down to the words from God that says you have been made complete and there is zero condemnation? So you have a choice. Whose words are you going to bow down to? And whoever's voice you bow down to has essentially become your God. So think about this. Jesus... This is on the third temptation. He says, again, the devil took him along to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. And then Jesus said to him, go away, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and began to serve him. See, I mean, this my whole life as a kid, when I read this verse, I used to think, man, this temptation is a no-brainer. Who would, who would bow down to Satan? You know, as a kid, you always have these images of what the devil looks like. You know, from watching Tom and Jerry or whatever. I mean, obviously, if I had a choice to bowing down to Satan or Jesus, I'm going to bow to Jesus. That seems like an obvious um, choice to make. And I felt like this week the Lord was showing me why this temptation actually causes many to fall. If you consider the words that come from Satan. I mean, if Satan is the accuser of the brethren... If Satan is the one that is bringing condemnation into our lives, I mean, if he's the author of the condemnation, if he's, all, if he's the author of all the negative words that, uh, that, you know, that come to our minds or through other people, you know, if he's the author of all the negative words and me choose to bow down to those words and say, yes, maybe I am a failure. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not enough. Maybe I am inadequate. 
You know, and we, you know, I, I, I'm seeing now where the Lord is showing me. Every time I bow down to those words that I am condemned, I am, I am worthless, I am nothing, I am good for nothing. You know, I'm essentially bowing down to Satan. I'm choosing to bow down to Satan. But if I choose to disregard those words and believe what the Word of God says about me, the Word says in Colossians that in Him I have been made complete. I have been made complete. You know, and Jesus says in Mark 16 that He, those who do not believe are condemned already. You know, it's not that Jesus or God is condemning you. You are condemning yourself because you're choosing to live a life of feeling like you're not good enough, you're not measuring up enough. But when you put your faith in Jesus, who makes you complete, the condemnation goes away. You start, you start to see yourself as God sees you. So I see here is like, see this is, a, I believe, the three temptations that Satan is tempting Jesus with was about identity. Because right before this, Jesus gets baptized by John the Baptist, and a voice comes from heaven. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. See, Jesus knew who he was. Jesus knew who he was. And Satan knew who Jesus was. And Jesus comes with these temptations. So in his third temptation, Jesus knew who he was. The Son of God. God in the flesh. Jesus is already complete. He's not lacking anything. And here Satan is saying, if you bow down to me, I will give you all these things. And it's like this temptation of like, well, am, I, am I missing something? No, Jesus knew who he was. He knew who he was. He wasn't missing anything. And that, I think that triggers something. Because I think this is what Jesus came to save us from. He came to destroy the works of the devil. And what are the works of the devil? Condemnation. Making you feel worthless. Making you feel like you still got to do something, you know, to earn God's favor or to be a better person. You know, when... In Christ, you have been made perfect. You have been made complete. You have been forgiven. You know, you have been made whole. But Satan tempts you with the words of, maybe I'm not completely whole. Maybe I'm, there's still some sins that are not forgiven. You know, maybe there's some parts of me I should still be ashamed of when Jesus took away my shame. You know, so am I going to choose to bow down to the enemy those words of condemnation that I'm still not forgiven, I'm still worthless or am I going to choose to serve God obey God, in other words submit to his voice that says I have been made a son I have been made complete in him you know you see the contrast here so Jesus says go away, away from you Satan, you know and I feel like this is the words I feel like he wants you to speak in your own heart if you're feeling condemned today, you're feeling like you're worthless, you're feeling like you're not good enough, these thoughts are, are entering your mind. You know, I think you need to let grace abound in your heart. You know, what is grace? Grace is the divine influence upon the heart. God himself influencing your heart. God inside you saying, yes, you are complete. Yes, you are my child. Yes, you belong to me. Yes, you are clean. Yes, the shame is gone. There's no shame. You're a blameless before me. The blood of Jesus has washed you of all your wrongdoings. In Christ, you have been made fully accepted. That's the words of our God. This, this is the God that we serve. The one that says you have been made complete. And by you choosing to not believe that and choosing to believe that you're still incomplete, not good enough, who's your God? You know, whose words are you going to bow down to? Whose words are you going to accept? The ones that are speaking life to you or the ones that are speaking death to you? I'll tell you something else I feel like the Lord was showing me in this passage is like how many of us, you know, because we feel like we're not good enough, that we find, we find ourselves trying to be something that we're not to gain something in this world because it feel like we're lacking something. If I need approval from people, 
a person or a group of people or an organization or at work or church or your friends or whatever, you, all your social areas in your life. How many, how many of us struggle with who we really are? We put on these filters, <laughs> whether through Photoshop or just our behaviors. We feel like we got to change our behavior to get accepted with the people around us. See, I think this is an example of where I have bowed down to Satan by him deceiving me, thinking who Michael is really is is not good enough. I gotta be like somebody else to be accepted. I gotta change who I am to be accepted. I need to deny how God made me to become accepted. You know what I feel like God is showing me here? Even if I was to change who I am, be something that I'm not, and gain the whole world, guess what I lost? My soul. Because how happy would I be if I gained the whole world, but yet I can't be myself to maintain it? i got to be something I'm not. So whoever I gain, or whatever I gain, is worthless if I lost myself. Man, I hope somebody's hearing this. I mean, I feel like grace is speaking to me to quit looking at what I'm lacking or feeling like i got to change to get something and start looking on the inside of my heart. Draw strength from the inner man. Ephesians chapter 3, Paul says to be, that we are to be strengthened by the Spirit in our inner man, in your inner self, in your innermost being. You know, that's where we have the well inside. This is where we have rivers of living water that flow from, from inside of your spirit. And in your spirit, you have grace, the divine influence upon the heart, declaring on the inside of you that you are the temple of God. You are the one who God chose to live inside. You are the one that God came and became flesh died on a cross and rose from the grave, seated at the right hand of the Father. He chose, he did all that so that he can live on the inside of you. So all those that would believe in him, he would be, he would, be, he would make you his residence. That's the glory of the gospel. And by me focusing on that, those words that I am more than enough because of Jesus living on the inside of me. It doesn't matter what I don't have on the outside. What truly matters, who is living on the, on the inside of me. And that is Christ forever. And as long as Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, <laughs> which is forever, I have no worries. I am, I am made complete. Man, that's just, that encourages me. Here it is a Friday night, and I was struggling with some loneliness, you know, depression and things. It's, I still struggle with things. You know, I still need grace to rise up in my heart to flush out all the negative thoughts and feelings I have about myself. And this is what set, set me free, you know, from the inside out. It's focusing on who I am, my identity. That I have been made one with him. You know, Paul says in Corinthians that we are joined with, with, in one spirit with, with the Lord. We are joined with him in spirit with, with the Lord. And like, you know, the more I, you know, I've learned to just keep focusing on that tonight, it helped drown out all the voices from, of the world. It helped drown out what, you know, the lack that I was experiencing from the outside. And it opened my eyes of my heart to see who I have on the inside and also who I, who I have become because of him living inside of me. So I am a new creation. Ephesians says to put on the new self, which is created in the likeness of God, created in righteousness and holiness. That's the new me. That's the real me. I'm not lacking anything. Therefore, that gives me grace to stand strong in the friend that God has made me to be. 
And if my friendship has been rejected in this area or by this person, it doesn't mean I need to change who I am. It just means I need to shake the dust off my sandals and move on to the next person or the next place because somebody else out there needs the friendship that I have to offer. I'm not going to let the enemy tempt me to alter who I am. Maybe I need to back down from the kind of friend that God has made me to be. Maybe I need to dim the light a little bit so that the world can accept me a little bit more. When Jesus says, let my light shine before men, what is my light? My light is the friendship of God. My light is the friendship of God. And the fruit of my faith is my friendship. I believe the, faith, the fruit of your faith is your friendship. And Jesus gave us one new commandment. He said, to love one another as I have loved you. And that is the strength I draw from tonight. That is my friendship in Christ, which is forever. When everything on this earth is temporary, I draw strength from a friendship that is eternal. And from there, I'm able to love myself and therefore also love you. Because Christ sees me as complete, I see you as complete. Because there's no condemnation at all in me then I see no condemnation in you. See, that's the grace that I believe has made me an awesome friend in this world, whether you accept me or not. You know, I'm learning not to get bitter, not to get frustrated with people or you or anybody else rejects me. I'm learning to be at peace with that. I, I just feel like people who don't understand you know, my friendship, they just don't understand grace yet. And I'm not mad at them, but... You know, until you understand that you've been made complete in Jesus, you won't understand grace. You won't understand the kingdom. As long as you're choosing to believe that you're incomplete, you know, then you're condemned. You still got to do something to earn God's favor. When the cross already took care of all that, you're never going to understand the gospel. You're never going to understand Christians. You're not going to understand the love of God. You know, as long as you're listening to the wrong words. Whose words are you going to bow down to? Are we going to bow down to condemnation? Or are we going to bow down to completion? I'm choosing to believe the word of God that says, I have been made complete in him. Amen? <laughs> I hope it's blessed you. To be reminded of these two things. Hope abounds by the power of the Holy Spirit. Faith abounds through thanksgiving, and we don't, we don't, we don't mess around. Hey, thank you for tuning in. <laughs> God bless you all.